conclusion. Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Today we are going to start the second session of the Niagara English uh, Seminar. Of course, I know that you remember as much as I remember the first session that uh, was held
You know about this seminar through the internet, through Facebook or uh, WhatsApp or whatever. Uh, especially after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, most of our lectures are done online. All of us, when we go home, we go to the internet, we go to Microsoft Teams, Zoom, uh, Google Classrooms, and so on, and we have lectures. We receive our salary every month through the ATM machine, which is a kind of computer technologies. Everything in our life, even uh, surgical operations, can be done through the computer without any uh, surgery. Many, many things in our life are controlled now with the internet. And so we, as uh, academic researchers, should cope up with this development, otherwise we will be left behind, we will be left. I think uh, within uh, one or two decades from now, how copy books, how the copy books which we read now will, will, will vanish. And traditional readers who used to read from books, they will not be here. The new generations will read their books and material through the internet. So we should come up with, with, with this new development. <clears throat> According to J. David Bonter, um, he is um, uh, a hypertext or a digital literature theorist that is written. So he says that the number of internet users exceeded 3.7 billion in March 2017. And more than 500 million tweets are exchanged daily on Twitter in 2016. And Facebook users in 2016 were more than 1.6 million. And YouTube had an established, sorry, an estimated 1 billion users in 2017. So what about today, after the COVID-19 pandemic? I think this number is much higher than that. So imagine this, 3.7 billion people used the internet four years ago. But now, after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, I think there are at least 5 billion users of the internet. Because all of us today, uh, learn through the internet uh, because we are afraid of going to couldn't be achieved with the printed book because once you print the book you can't change it but now these visions and dreams have come true with the introduction of the world wide web and the development of computer technologies with the click of a mouse you can oscillate, you can navigate, you can go here and there. You can start with another any place you want. If you click, just to click something, a link inside your text, it can take you directly to a YouTube channel, a Twitter, Twitter account. It can take you to a video or music, audio file, some animated text, some kinetic text and so on. So this is completely different. This is a revolution in the field of literary studies. <clears throat> so what do we mean by digital literature? What does um, a digital literary text mean? It is a text which is written just to especially to be read online and on a computer. So, is a PDF file digital? No. No. Is a Word file digital? No. PPT file like this, or PowerPoint file, is it a digital uh, uh, form of writing? No. Why not? Because you can print these texts out. If you can print them out and read them on paper, so this is not digital. Digital means that we should read it online. Why? Because it includes hyperlinks. It includes um, video files. 
If you have a book, uh, I don't have books. Uh, Dr. Jeff, do you have a book for me? <coughs> New books. Yes, you are digitalizing uh, this seminar. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, this is a book. Okay, can I open the first page and then click a link here to go to page number 15? No. Can I um, um, click an icon here to play a video or listen to music? There is no music here. So this is not digital. And the PDF file, which we can print out and read on paper, it's not digital. Okay? So, a digital model, or a digital short story, is one that should be read online, on your computer. And by computer we mean PC, laptop, uh, tablet, or smartphone. Um, any device that can be connected to the internet. Okay? So, this is completely different. A hypertext, or a digital text, or electronic text, all mean the same. Uh, they are completely different. You can't print them out. You can't read them without a computer. And internet, of course. Well, the first novels for digital display were written uh, and published in the late 1980s. Before 1987, there was no digital uh, write, uh, uh, writing. There was no digital novel or fiction before that date. Uh, on that year, 1987, uh, we witnessed uh, the first uh, novel, the first digital novel, which is called Afternoon, a story by Michael Jones. <coughs> so what do we mean by hypertext? The, the word hypertext is a major concept in digital literature. You should understand what we mean by this concept. The term hypertext, it is a text which is hyper. A text which includes hyperlinks. By clicking one of these links, it can take you to many other uh, places within or outside, inside or outside that text. So the term hypertext was coined by the computer pioneer and philosopher Theodore H. Nelson in the 1960s. And by this word, uh, he means a text designed to be read not sequentially. You can't read it in a sequential order. There is no order. There is no center. The center cannot hold, as WB's uh, once said. There is no center. You can start reading the text in any place you like. You can click something to, to, to know some information about the writer, about his time, a map, a video, anything you like. You can visit his Facebook account, you can visit his uh, Twitter page, and so on. You cannot do this in this book. Even if, um, if, I, if I write to you here my uh, email, or my Facebook account. You can't click something here to go directly to my Facebook page. No, you can't. Because it's not hyper. It's not uh, hyper means there is no internet connection in what, a book. What, what, what if the PDF, the PDF file, what if it has some, some links? Can we consider this? Uh, you can consider it digital if you click on the paper and go directly to the other link. But at the same time, it's, it's, yes, it, you can print out this, uh, this PDF file and the link here static. You know, you can't move it, you can't click it with your hand, your mouse to go to this file mentioned in the link. Still, you know, it's just a sentence written in ink and you print it on paper. That's all, okay? <clears throat> well, the hypertext, let me explain to you. Uh, how a hypertext works. A hypertext 
consists of link sales. These are important concepts for those people who want to specialize in the field of digital literature. Alexia is, let's say, a page. It's like a page on paper. So Alexia consists of uh, information post, a page consisting of composed of information. And within each Alexia, there are nodes. What do we mean by a node? A node is something like a paragraph, a unit of information. And this paragraph or this node contains links or hyperlinks. Once you click one of these links, it can take you in the same moment, in the same second, it can take you directly from this uh, node to other nodes, to other links. And also, you read from cover to cover. You start at the first page and continue reading until you finish at the end. But this is not the case in digital literature. <clears throat> Well, the first stage or the first generation of hypertext fiction, let's focus on fiction because this is my major. Uh, my major is fiction, so I, I'm going to focus on fiction today. The first generation of hypertext fiction started in 1987, in the last 15 years of the 20th century. At the time, hypertext fiction just includes hyperlinks. Just hyperlinks. By clicking a link, it takes you to another part of the novel or to other novels. But with the message of time, at the advent of the 21st century, with the development of the World Wide Web, at the appearance of YouTube uh, and other uh, media, uh, media uh, uh, other media, yes, so we began to witness a new generation, a new revolution in hypertext fiction, which is called hypermedia fiction. Hypermedia. It means that, or interactive uh, fiction, in the sense that the text doesn't only include hyperlinks, it can also include, in addition to the text, it can include videos. So while reading, you can click uh, something to play a video. Part of the novel takes the form of a video or a movie. You can lis listen to music inside the text. You can watch animated text in front of you. You can uh, extend your hand to touch your screen and choose your own path through the novel. You can choose which path to go, and in this way you are going to decide the development of the novel, and you are going to decide what uh, the, the end or the conclusion of the novel. Well, recently, few years ago, there appeared uh, another development in this field, which is called Fissio Cyber Text. Cyber means internet. Something that you should do on the internet, an uh, internet text, which involves your own physical features. With your own body, you can get inside the text. You understand this? Uh, you know Xbox? Yes, the Xbox. X dash box. It's a new device uh, similar to PlayStation 5 in which you can connect it to this uh, camera. With a camera, uh, the camera can uh, register your own body. And you become a character inside the novel you are reading. So, for example, when you jump, the character inside the novel will jump. If you uh, play, if you run, the other characters will run. So, in one way or another, you become a character. You are identified with one of the characters inside the novel. So, this is a, a revolution uh, in the field of literary studies. And as I said, that uh, when we just started, we should cope up with this. We should adapt to this new change. Otherwise, we will be ignored 
uh, we will be left behind. We should try to develop ourselves. We should try to incorporate this in our uh, uh, curriculum. So <clears throat> this is called Physio Cyber Text, in which you, as a reader, is no longer a reader. Can a reader do something like that? Uh, why, if, if I try to um, uh, wave with my hand, are, are the characters here are going to obey me? No. Because this is printed material. But here, on the internet, everything becomes possible. I have an Xbox at home for my children. And I brought, I brought it for them. But actually it's me who is going to all the time uh, playing for it. <laughs> because this is fiction, this is novel, you know. Uh, so I, I want to try it all the time. Well, how can we analyze a, um, a literary or a digital literary text? If you have a digital text like this, how can you analyze it? We used to use feminism, psychoanalysis, uh, um, narratology, uh, the unreliable narrator, uh, objectification of women, and, and so on. Neo-historicism. Neo yes, that's right, Trojan, uh, a specialist in neo-historicism. Uh, thank you. Uh, how can you apply, how can you analyze uh, a critical, a uh, digital literary text? Buy an Xbox first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should buy an Xbox. If you have an Xbox, everything would be fine. But you should give it to me to, to play some games first. And you will uh, succeed. You will... <laughs> uh, well, there appeared a new critical school, which is suitable for this new uh, way of presentation. New methods of representation need new critical approaches to analyze. So we have here a hypertext critical theory. This is the new, the recent theory which we use to analyze and understand the events, the characters and the themes inside the hypertext. <clears throat> so the hypertext uh, critical theory appeared with the advent of digital literature. So we have two waves of this theory. The first wave uh, appeared in the 1980s and early 1990s. And at the time, all hypertext theories or critics were influenced by ideas uh, of uh, post structures and reader responsive theories like Michel Foucault, uh, Derrida, Barthes, and others. But after the development of the World Wide Web, there appeared new development like uh, using hypermedia, using other modes of representation. So we witnessed uh, a new, uh, a new, uh, a new stage in uh, hypertext printed theory, they called for an interactive reader. Not only an active reader, but an interactive, in which the reader should become a part of the creative process. The, the reader himself or herself writes the text. How can you write the text as we'll see now? <clears throat> so, we are going to discuss just two concepts related to uh, this theory. I have taken two concepts from this theory, I'm going to explain them now. The first concept is non-linearity. Non-linearity. Linearity means straight, direct. When you read the book, this book, you have to read to start uh, at the first page and continue reading until you, you go to the end. So, you read from end to end, from cover to cover. This is straight, this is direct. Uh, if I ask uh, Dr. Jehan, for example, uh, to hand me something, she will come from there to here directly, it will be a very short distance. But if she chooses to go from this distance 
uh, from this uh, path and uh, come back again until she comes. It will be a very distant, uh, uh, no, a, a very uh, uh, big distance, you know. Okay, so this is done linear, a zigzag way. So, yes, the printed book is linear. You read it from cover to cover, linear. But the hypertext is not linear. It is not linear. It takes this form. Hmm. These are notes. Notes means paragraphs. So suppose you are reading uh, the first note, number A. You can go directly. Uh, the, the, the dot here is a hyperlink. You can click this hyperlink to go to the second uh, note. But you can choose to go directly to number D. It's up to you. So in uh, node number A, there are three links. You can choose any of them to click. Okay, suppose you are not going to click. So there is no novel. If you don't click something here to move to another uh, node, so there is no novel. It depends on clicking the hyperlink. So you can go, for example, to uh, number E. And from E you go back to D and so on. So there is no linearity. There is no sequentiality in this. There is no sequential order. You can choose any, any uh, uh, sequence or order to read the novel. <clears throat> Send a comment. 
leave a comment. You can add your own comment to and this comment is going to be read by other readers and it's going to be read by the author himself or herself and the author in many times modifies the novel accordingly. According to what you say, I myself in this paper which I uh, published uh, four months ago, I wrote some comments to one uh, of the authors asking them to modify some details in the novel. And after a few weeks, he wrote another comment and said, I'm going to change these details uh, because some readers have asked me to do. Then we have another version of the novel based on our comments as readers. In this way, I am not just a reader. I am a W reader. W reader means a writer reader. I participated in the final form of this novel. So this means that you do not modify the original text yourself. Yes. No, no, you can't do this. Okay. The author, yes. You write it, yes. Through negotiation and discussion uh, with the author and with other uh, readers, every one of you as readers, you know, uh, post the comments. The author may see, may see this and uh, become convinced of your point of view and change. This way you are an e-editor or an online editor. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, something like this is one of the jobs of the new W reader. <clears throat> so here, as we have just seen this, are these readers? No, they are playing a game. And novel, you become a co-author, a co-constructor of this text. So um, the pioneer of this new concept is uh, George Lando, uh, who coined this concept in fact. And he provides us with this uh, diagram in which uh, we begin to understand that um, the, the new W reader is not just a reader but also a writer. Thank you so much. Uh, he is both a reader and writer. So you become two persons with two heads. You become two persons in the same body. Uh, you read and while reading, you can modify, you can create your own uh, end, you can create your own content within the text. You become a W reader. <clears throat> so the, the reader of the hypertext is no longer just a reader, he is a reader uh, with, um, uh, who becomes a producer as well of that text. For Lando, the term reader doesn't seem appropriate in so far as digital literature is concerned. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So instead of writing uh, 
the size of, of pages. You can just be a writer just having a comment here and there, and then you become a writer. You become an author, yes. Yeah, that's right. And uh, believe it or not, Dr. Wright, now we have Twitter fiction. Twitter fiction, uh, you know, it's very short, short stories, you know, just three or four lines. A tweet is a novel, it's not a short story. Just a tweet becomes a short story. Just one note. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and also, we have now fan fiction. Fan fiction means fiction written by the audience, by the readers. Okay? So we have many different forms of writing nowadays. That's why we, we should come up with this. Uh, 
think she means that uh, once or as long as uh, this uh, uh, and people can access and they can come people can the change it so the time you mean this becomes, uh, it becomes uh, endless it's, it becomes an infinite uh, piece of information yes that's right yes that's right um, when you write uh, a book like this once you print it no, it's finished. It's you can't change it. Yes, you can change it in another edition if you want. But this is the end. Once it is followed by a reader, you can't retrieve it. You can't restore it back. I think she, she also means that it becomes something like a living creature that mm -hmm. never dies. Continuous life. Well, never dies. Yeah, yeah, as long as there are readers to change and modify it, so it will live. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Dr. But it's up to the author to change the text or not. Yeah. All of us can uh, can write comments, uh, everything, but it's up to the author to change. Yeah. Yes, Asma. Um, there are many different forms of um, digital writing. Some forms do not allow the reader to change. The reader just gives suggestions. The reader suggests and it's the, the author who can accept or not. But in other forms like fan fiction, uh, in fan fiction, someone writes a sentence. Then a snap comes and writes um, another uh, uh, event in the novel. Then Dr. White comes and adds a third event and so on. So this is open, you can do this. But in some forms of Digital writing, yes, you, you cannot modify, it's the author who can accept or reject your own modification. Thank you. So, with this new development, we witness a new process called writing, reading, or public reading. After a few decades from now, I think that we will witness the death of the reader. As part several decades said, the death of the author or the death of the writer. Today we witness the death of the reader as we used to know him or her. And now we are witnessing uh, the happy birth of the W reader. A reader who is not passive. A reader who is not just receptive, just reading. No. You read and add something. Choose your own pathway, play the game, click your own links, and so on. <clears throat> Dr. Ahmed, how much time do I still have? Well, we are enjoying your presentation. So, so can I continue until the letter? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so, I am not a free shooter here. No, no, no. There are limitations. Dr. Ahmed is the author, so now he is determining. What to, what to choose, you know? He gives me some, uh, some options, but still, he doesn't have to be a No, no, you're okay, it's okay. Go on. I'm, I'm going to make it short, inshallah. Now, let me apply this uh, to uh, at least one or two uh, texts. Here I have a text. I hope I can um, go online now. Uh, I'm trying. Okay, but I can't go online unless I have uh, an internet connection. 
it's not clear, you know, it's not obvious to you. Okay. So if you click after it, next to it, it will take you to another bar. We will discover that this model contains eight bars, and each bar, each bar has 12 story lines. And each story talks about one character. But you cannot reach this all of a sudden. You have to spend much time. And every time you read, you discover something new. Until you become an expert of this text. It's very difficult to understand the text from the first time. So you become an active or interactive reader. When you do this and you choose your own way, you become you know, some sort of uh, participating in the authorship. You have a foreign voice in the text. Well, you go back to the book you write. One. One has to speak about yes. This is one. No, this is one. Okay. Alright. Here we don't have any links to, to go. You have to click something to go to the next page. I mean the, the, the next next year. But we don't have anything to read. Yes, Dr. Dr. Yara says we can click the bars. The same diagram becomes a, a, a little one in the margin here. So you can click any, any part of this. But also, uh, after many readings of this text, I discovered that there is a hidden link. How can I know my way? The author doesn't help you. It seems that the author wants to tell you, aren't you an author with me? Huh? Try your hand. Uh, uh, you should be tired like me. You should work hard with me. You do try to exert effort to find your way. I'm not going to tell you anything. So, if we click this, it will take us to another part. Here again is a hidden lane and so on. So, this is not linear. This is not a straight way. This, this, this is full of tricks. This is magic. <laughs> this is magic. And magic, magic is not straight. Because it tries to deceive you in one way or another. Yes. So it's not predictable at all. Magic is not linear. And so is digital literature. It is full of... Uh, uh, illusion. Yes, illusion. Mm -hmm. said when? Summer? Mm -hmm. uh, you said here that they are hidden, right? Hidden, yeah. Uh, just using, you know, like, control I, I can find all the, the hidden links here, and they are no longer hidden. I can find them every one. I'm not going to search them, you know? They are already there. I can get them in just one step. Through well, but for the moment of reading, you will not find anything. At least you are going to collect in a moment of magic for a few seconds, for a few minutes, and so on. I always hate uh, summer because summer has, you know, always uh, think uh, Paris and do, yeah. Yeah, and then I will be able to fuck up Paris and do. Well, so do you think that if you move from one, for, uh, Dr. Wright uh, um, asked me to click uh, on one, Dr. Wright thinks that. One is the beginning of the novel, no? And two is not the second part of the novel. And third is not the third. And nothing is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we are in uh, uh, a waiting for Budu world, you know? You know waiting for Budu? Uh, it is not it. Yeah, of course. It's a the uh, Waiting for Budu by someone reading. So, for example, when Vladimir asks his friend, uh, uh, how old are you? He says, uh, how, old are, how old is me? Uh, uh, I am five years. Uh, how are you? I am 25. So, when, there is no logical, there is no logical answer. No, because he just wants to present the topic. In the end game. I'm, 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 I'm teaching them uh, in game by some of it. Really? It's, it's uh, absurd. Well, 
Do you want me to finish now? As you like. I can speak from now to another country. Okay. Take, your, take your time, feel free, right? Because we are enjoying this. Thank you. She wants to tell something 
she is very sharp. At this moment, there is a sort of romantic music played in the background with the same meaning. When you hear the music, you feel that this is what Betty wants to say. But because she can't express her feelings, music speaks out for her. Yes. Music, just the music. Okay? So music is not just a background. In, in, in digital literature, music becomes a foreground. It conveys what is going on in our, in our hearts and minds. If you are shy to tell someone something, okay, the music at this moment can tell us as readers what? <laughs> you feel it. You as a reader should have feelings.
you are going to bring your own personality to project it on this situation. You are going to choose the choice which is suitable for your personal traits, for your own uh, psychological makeup, the way you usually do in your life. So for example, if you ask me what I'm going to do, I am not that courageous person. So I'm going to have a look from the window. I'm going to go around the, uh, the house and have a look from the window. It's much safer. But suppose if I will open the garage door and a man with the, uh, a gun kills me, uh, is it the But Dr. Wright may be risky. He is going to choose number three. Open the door to do it. We'll get some answers. In this case, Dr. Wright's path will be different. Dr. Wright choose number three or uh, something. Uh, the way Dr. Wright, I mean the events Dr. Wright is going to encounter in the novel are completely different from uh, uh, my own my own events. I'm going to see other events, and the end of course will be different. And there is no going back. No, Doctor Wright will continue in this way. He will see different events from the events I'm going to choose. If I choose number four or two or one, some again I hear some. <laughs>
Video clips would you find the names replace the main action of the narrative and even readers uh, become double readers. Actually, we are living in a strange digital world in which things fall apart. The center cannot hold and the narrative has no obvious setting, plot or point of view. The reader is no longer a reader. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the narrative, as W. Reed said. Mere non-linearity is loosed upon the narrative. Thank you so much. This is literature. This is literature, I believe. And I, I, you know, I'm asking. 
this is actually a comment and a question at the same time. Do you think, sir, that this is serious literature? Or it is something that has to do with the nature of our modern age, with the development of mass communication, with social media, right? That I write something, an idea, just like the very short story, right? Just a very short story. And I leave the ground for the readers. Do whatever they can, alright? Is this the literature? I'm asking for my asking, alright? This is my own impression. Alright. One, one, one more thing. Alright, one more thing. The absurd theater. Yes. A novel, a novel is a world of its own. A complete world. With its polyphony, different sounds. With its polyglossia, social, you know, uh, distances and social interactions. It has its own sitting and time, it has all the chronotope, it has... Alright, this is monotology, right? But now, we are returning back to the theater, because we have here the audience engaging with what's going on on stage. This is the second question, sir. So much. Thankful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Rafa, for the comments. Actually, um, I'm not, I'm not the owner um, of digital detection. You can criticize it, that's right. I'm here just representing or describing it. You know. I, I'm not criticizing what you say. Okay. I'm just you know, wondering. wondering. Yes. You're not invited. Uh, yes. Well, you can accept it or not. Uh, it's, it's natural to, uh, to accept or to do something. Well, I mean, that is not sense, one sense. Um, Prepare your children for a future which is different from yours. And at my own Holoko is a man who is a man. Dr. Ahmed and Yara are judging biblical literature with their own traditional way of writing, a way of seeing things around us. Well, um, we should change our look. We should uh, see digital literature with different eyes. Know their criteria, study them, and then try to understand. Uh, this is a uh, new criticism, Dr. Jehan, by the way. We cannot judge a historical era by the criteria of another era. We will not, we will not be fair at all. Okay? So, few decades from now, we don't know if we will be alive or not. There will be other generations which will look at this uh, novel by uh, Charles Dickens or Jane Austen and say, yeah, <laughs> what's that? Are we going to read it from the book? Are there something called the printed material? Are there books uh, printed with ink? Everything in our life will be digitalized. There will come the day when Dr. Ahmed, uh, when he comes to shake hands with me, there will appear here certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, there will be a barcode or something. Yes. When I, uh, no, no, not the hearing. Not the hearing. I think I'm sleeping here. I guess I have the feelings that I'm 